people with high degrees of autonomy have been able to cope much better because one of the easiest ways to make people anxious is to remove either their sense of autonomy, their sense of purpose, or their sense of mastery. Traders are lucky in that we carry these around with us like a turtle, so they can't be taken from us. Hi, this is Caroline Stephen, and this is Talking Trading. As lockdown continues here in Sydney and restrictions still apply to parts of the country, the COVID-19 pandemic is still affecting us. So how are traders coping, both psychologically and financially? How can this time be used to reevaluate your life and move forward to build a more prosperous future? Well, this year marks the 22nd year at the Trading Game Mentor Program. Since the year 2000, Chris Tate and Louise Bedford have made the mentor program their life's work. And it is a culmination of all their veteran market experience. Let's hear what they both have to say about life during the pandemic. Louise Bedford and Chris Tate here. We wanted to bring you this very special session because we know that so many people have had such a challenge over the past few months because of COVID-19. And it's times of challenge that reveal your true character. When you're vulnerable, you find out who you really are. And we wanted to talk to you today about what this has done to our traders, how their mindsets have been affected, and some action steps that you can use to move forward. So firstly, I'd like to welcome Chris Tate. Chris has been my business partner for, gosh, nearly 25 years. We've been running the mentor program for that. Chris, can you tell everybody a little bit about our background? Okay. In, in terms of the mentor program, let's talk about that. The, the mentor program is a very, very simple idea. And the simple idea is to get people to a point in time and space where they have a trading plan that can deal with any market, any time frame, any instrument, but it's actually their plan. One of the great failings of other educational things that I've seen is it's simply a black box. It's a one size fits all. These are my shoes. You may now wear my shoes. Well, that's fine if I've got the same size feet as you, but most people don't have the same size feet. And so the mentor program seeks to overcome that problem by guiding people towards having their own trading system, their own trading plan, a plan that is idiosyncratic to them. And as you mentioned, we've been doing this for 21 years now. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> it's a repeat for free course. So we've been able to be involved with people's lives. You see, I think with Corona, what's happened is that even though we are being told we're in the same boat, we're not really in the same boat. We are in the same storm. Some people have had to homeschool their children and they've lost their jobs. They've realised that they are vulnerable and they've had to accept government welfare. Other people have loved the isolation. Woohoo, it's great, isn't it? You know, we don't have to deal with people. We don't have to go into work every day. So wherever you are in that spectrum, I think you have to recognise it, but recognise that it's different for different people. Now, Chris, how have our traders coped in the pandemic from your side? There's, there's probably a bit to unpack here. Part of it is the notion of autonomy. Uh, those traders who are autonomous in their actions have been unaffected uh, simply because their lives are directed by themselves. One of the things that people have suddenly found out is that by and large, their lives lack autonomy. If the business they work for shuts because of COVID-19, well then the business they worked for has shut. There is nothing they can do about it. Their life is now no longer directed by them. Their life is directed by ex these external influences. Now granted, we are all operating under the same umbrella of social isolation of restrictions placed upon us, which are necessary. But within those restrictions, within that 
individual bubble that we each have, people with high degrees of autonomy have been able to cope much better. Because one of the easiest ways to make people anxious is to remove either their sense of autonomy, their sense of purpose, or their sense of mastery. Traders are lucky in that we carry these around with us like a turtle. So they can't be taken from us. If you have a job, if you rely upon somebody else, if you rely upon the economy at large, let's even go as far as saying that, then you don't have true autonomy. For example, if you ran, uh, let, let, let's say you work for yourself, you run a cafe or a restaurant, you might think you have autonomy. You don't, because the government just shut your restaurant and your cafe, or they introduced restrictions that were so tight that they made them unprofitable. Short of shutting markets, which is highly unlikely, there is very, very little that can be done to impact traders. It, Irrespective of market condition, we are able to do something because we are self-directed. We carry our business around with us in our head. And that, that's been our great advantage during this time. And I think the confidence tends to expand us and ambiguity tends to contract us. You know, once you are facing an ambiguous future, everything comes down smaller and smaller and smaller until you don't want to make a move. But actually, in the past, if you look historically, that's the times when the biggest moves have been made and people have gone from strength to strength during those times of challenge. I can tell you one area though, Chris, that it really did impact you and I saw this firsthand. It was survivor guilt where I saw, because you were making so much money at different times and so were our traders and we were getting email upon email and conversation upon conversation about, oh my gosh, I'm making money. Everybody around me is losing money. What do I do? And I want to talk about that. I want you to tease that out and discuss some of the methods that traders can use because our mentorees definitely found that there was a lot of money coming in super fast. What's your advice if somebody's facing that situation? Look, survivor guilt is always a problem for people, particularly when we are surrounded by the knowledge that many, many people are actually doing it very, very hard. But <clears throat> I, I have a mantra that I try and pass on to people. That the easiest way to help the poor is not to be one of them. If you are one of them, there is nothing you can do. You're like everybody else. Uh, there's a case in point. I have half a dozen people in my backyard beaver and ladder renovation that started just as COVID-19 began to expand. I could have quite simply cancelled the contract and pulled up stumps, pulled the blinds down and hidden. But I made the decision that the money was there. I'm autonomous in the way I run my business. And it gave me the opportunity for the past three months or so to keep half a dozen people employed. The thing I would note is that on the day they broke ground out the back, they had seven jobs lined up mine included, six people cancelled on the day, which left them with nothing. Now, I could have gone the same way, but decided not to because A, it wouldn't be the right thing to do, and B, my business is unaffected. I'm unaffected in terms of a business sense, and that, that does create some problems, some tension. Any, any real thinking person would go, well, I'm doing so well and other people are doing so poorly. So the question becomes, A, how do you reframe it? Or do you reframe it by saying, I'm employing these people. I'm helping them. So there is a, this sort of expansionary approach. And the other is to simply accept that as traders, we didn't cause COVID-19, just like we didn't cause the GFC, just like we didn't cause the tech wreck, just like we didn't cause 1987. So irrespective of what the markets would have been doing, irrespective of the catalytic event that triggered them, we would still be doing the same thing. We would still be surfing the same waves. We, we don't create the waves. We just ride them as they occur. 
I heard somebody say on social media, put up the Christmas tree now. And, you know, the difficulty with that thinking is that there's some good months left. And I think that if you're going to write off this year and say, okay, you know, let's just put that aside and move forward without looking at the lessons that you can learn, that's a real problem. Now's the time to work out how can I build myself a better future? What are the aspects that I want to change in my life? Am I happy with the people I live with? What about my friends? Uh, is my connection high enough? What about my skill set? Is there anything I can do between now and the end of the year to improve my standing? And I think that's something that people are writing off far too quickly. So Chris, if you could ma wave a magic wand, what can traders do right now to prepare? Every year is, is different. Each one presents unique opportunities, unique challenges. One, one of the things I will say about social isolation and, and people reevaluating their lives and what they were doing is that I can guarantee you there were vast numbers of people who downloaded courses from groups like Udemy on you know, how to speak French, how to cook the perfect lasagna, how to play the piano. And all they've done is sit on the couch, eat twisties and watch Netflix. There will, however, be a second group of people who use the courses they paid for because there's a recognition that time is important. And, and when life gifts you something like time, because time's arrow flies in only one direction, there's a limited amount. But sometimes you get a little, little gift. And look, I won't say COVID-19 was a gift, but it had presented some people with the opportunity to sit back and reevaluate what they're going to do. So we come back again to this notion of, of autonomy. Are you an individual that insulates yourself against sort of the slings and arrows of others, the environment, life in general? And the people who will do well in here, those who sat down, who've had that discussion with themselves. And that is one of those very, very difficult discussions. Because as you said, what it will be is all encompassing. It will encompass family, friends, it will encompass job. It will also look at how do I move forward? How do I make certain that, that let's say, you know, that this event repeats itself in five years' time? How do I insulate myself now from that? How, how am I now armoured up? And, and they're the ones who will actually learn something from this, will actually take something positive uh, from this awful event we've all been subject to. So if you were to reframe this, if you were to say, what if this was a time of opportunity? How would your life look different? If you are the remotest bit curious about our mentor program and how we have been able to help people continuously for the past 21 years, years with our repeat for free course you must register on tradinggame.com.au forward slash priority tradinggame.com.au forward slash priority I'm about to give a whole heap of free resources to everybody registered and those resources will not only drive you forward with your trading but they'll also drive you forward with your mindset because really the six inches between your ears, as it used to be said, in inches, I don't know how many centimetres that is, that is your key. If you can alter your mindset, you can alter your future. And we have the ability to be able to help you do just that. Even if you decide not to get involved in our mentor program because we don't pick you at the end, numbers are quite limited and we can't choose everybody, you will still benefit from those resources we're giving you on priority notification. So register even if you are the remotest bit curious about what we've got here because I can tell you the people that we've helped are sitting pretty this year and moving forward. This is going to be an idea that you can't let go. You're going to find tonight when you go to bed, you're going to go, should I, should I? And that bubble of excitement should be the thing to guide you. We have the resources and we can help you with your entry, exit and position sizing with the very fabric of an effective trading plan. Chris, anything else to add? I would finish with an observation, a little test for everybody. And that is to sit down, have a look around you and look at what your life is now. 
that will be your life for 2025 if you don't do anything about it. So now's the time. Priority notification is where it's at. Tradinggame.com.au forward slash priority. And we'll welcome you in and give you a heap of free trading resources in the lead up to our mental program launch. We're opening for bookings in mid-November. You need to be involved in priority notification to be involved with that. It's in your hands. And that's all for today's episode. Stay tuned to hear Roman Bogomazov from the Wyckoff Institute on trading. I'm Caroline Stevens. Stay well. Take care. As always, if you like this show, please be sure to tell a friend. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcast and make sure you give us a big fat five-star review. You'll also notice that Talking Trading doesn't use sponsors and barely advertisers. This is because Chris Tate and Louise Bedford fund this show from tradinggame.com.au. So until next week, happy trading. The views represented on Talking Trading are generally nature and do not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. Before acting on any of the information, consider its appropriateness in regards to your own situation.